Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So we want to thank our newest Patreons. Yes, we want to say a huge thank you to Morgan and Caitlin. Thanks, you guys. Yes, thank you so much for your support. Being part of the family, it's a blessing. And, you know, we're going to go over some things that we maybe we take for granted uh, in the bigger picture. As you see this from amazing astronomy, you're looking at 140,000 cosmic islands. Every point of light is an entire galaxy, each containing billions of stars, trillions of planets, and they say, who knows, maybe life. That's a given. That's a given. Again, it should be just more than obvious that we've never been alone. In fact, it's impossible for you to ever to be alone, no matter how lonely you feel at any particular point in time. You know, I think there was a, a mathematician that did some kind of uh, calculation or formulation, and, and he proved that it is such a small fraction. The possibilities of us being alone are, you know, zero to none. And this is what they've taught us growing up, is that you're all alone. It's only you out in the universe. There's only this one God, and um, this is all that there is. But no, there's there's so much more when you go inside and, and dig deep. Yes, and there are many different philosophies and, and, and many different systems that can be categorized like polytheism, animism, pantheism, monism, dualism, monotheism. And, you know, again... As I go through and like look at these articles, I never find a good article. I really don't. I, I don't find anything that seems to really get it. Uh, and, and that's sad, but that's really uh, a system of the system. Because, you know, again, the way this system operates it, it is one that needs to operate in the dark. And, you know, if we understood the greater truth, everything instantly changes, totally changes. It's the lens with which we perceive this world is so critical because it can clarify or distort. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think it's important to discover that you are in a box if you're looking at one of these you know definitely understand it definitely study it because that's our nature our nature is to explore but not not to get stuck we are very curious creatures and we're here to push those boundaries of curiosity yeah so you know again i i i went through a good dozen different articles and didn't find any that um, felt really uh, on point per se. And so, you know, I will share what they're saying here when we talk about polytheism. It refers to the worship of many gods. Traditionally, Jews, Christians, and Muslims are referred to as people of the book in the Quran, <clears throat> known as the Abrahamic religions because they rec recognize Abraham as the founding prophet. All three are said to be monotheistic religions that strictly endorse the worship of the God of Abraham. Jehovah to the Jews and Christians, Allah to the Muslims. They have distinguished themselves from pagans or infidels because they worship the one God as opposed to those who worship many gods, such as the Greco-Roman polytheists and Hindus who worship many demigods, perhaps along with genuine incarnations of God. And again, this is written from probably somebody that's that's been brought up with the uh, Abrahamic tradition, but perhaps... Uh, you know, has embraced um, and started to, to delve down the road of, of the Vedic knowledge. Uh, ultimately, again, even within any system, like we, we can easily denote tens of thousands of different branches of Christianity, you know, and then over in Islam, you know, you have the Sunnis and the Shias, but you also have the Sufi who are mystics and view things very, very different. 
uh, you have different forms of Judaism, you know, from more modern to older, more orthodox views. And, and then you also have uh, the Kabbalists, uh, again, who view things in a more mystical light. And, and when we look at Christianity, what we have today, and we go back farther, because that was part of m one of my original journeys when I was a teenager. I wanted to get to the root of Christianity, so I kept trying to find older and older traditions. And you might say, well, the oldest is Catholicism. Well, no, there's actually older. They were just mostly eradicated when uh, Catholicism came into being, you know, with the uh, Catholic Church coming through uh, the Ro Roman Emperor. But yet, you know, there were those of the Gnostic persuasion. There were those of many other persuasions that didn't view it in the traditional fundamentalist point of view. They had a more esoteric uh, or mystical view of things. And again, you know, when we look into even Hinduism, there's just a million different branches. And you could really boil it down to uh, dualistic against non-dualistic points of view. But when we go deeper and deeper and deeper, you know, I think we can come to like universal truths and universal uh, cores that we can center around and grow from there. But when we put these labels on, we really, really uh, kind of shut down uh, perceptions in, in some ways. We kind of block off the ability to take something new in. Mm -hmm. I, I think all of these things are very important to study and to to understand, you know, but don't allow yourself to get stuck in this box. And I also think it's part of human nature to want to understand something. Everyone wants to be part of something bigger than themselves. They, they want to look in deeper and deeper until they find that truth. And you know, for me, that's that was that was the case where I'm trying to get myself to fit in this square hole or round peg or whatever, and I just wouldn't fit. But I, I had to sit and ask myself the the honest questions and say, well, you know, is this even true? Um, which was really hard because so many people are telling me it's true. But definitely, they're out here for a very good reason. Study all of them, get a taste of all of them, and and I'm. I think because we are spiritual beings, it's like we want to give ourselves over to something, devote ourselves to something, but it doesn't have to be, you know, something that's written and out there, given the construct of the control system we're in. Yeah, you know, and and again, it's it's an evolution that's that's transpired as as this particular one says. This is Jehovah, the Judeo Christian God. Did you know that Yahweh Jehovah is a pagan god? Yeah, originally a storm god, and it originally had a consort, as we were talking about Asherah. So you know, basically, what happened over time was it went from a polytheistic standpoint as far as uh, the point of view of of the older um, Judeo tradition uh, to a monotheistic that was created by the priesthood. And again, you know, this is part of the power structure that we have. Yet, when we, when we look really, really deep, and, you know, as we talked about, you know, the Roman gods in, in reality, again, most of these gods and these beings are simply extraterrestrials and, and others, you know, can be thought of as more personifications of natural forces. But then again, um, or astrotheology is another thing, you know, pointing out to the stars and the planets and giving them personas because everything is alive. And, and that's the thing, you know, the, every star, every planet has a consciousness and it's all really when you look at it they're all collectives and this is another part of that realization and you are a collective every single one of us is a collective as well so you know we can divide by all these different theisms 
and and we could go in and and debate things uh to a degree but the the reality is the one thing that you get to is is the fact that consciousness uh, you can't go and find anything that comes before consciousness consciousness is is the prime cause it's it's the mover it's everything so when we look at the the theistic way of looking at it like in monotheism god creates the universe now pantheon pantheism god is the universe <clears throat> panentheism the universe is within god but god is even beyond the universe and so in some ways we can kind of start to see an equation here with shiva and shakti or with taoism uh, in that you know you have consciousness and then you have the manifestation and consciousness resides within the manifestation but consciousness is beyond the manifestation at the same time you know, coming here and being able to manifest is just one of the huge blessings. It's, it's one of the things that we get to do when we make it here in the 3D. And understanding that if you've made it here in the 3D, you're definitely a master manifester. And I think there is also a natural craving and wanting to get a hold of consciousness and understand it and define it so you can control it. And then also there is that concept inside of yourself because you're watching everything go on in your life. And you're like, you know, is this real? You know, and, and if it is real, I have to define it. And they're always wanting us to uh, define things. And this starts in school. When they send us to school, there's always these definitions. So it's just in our nature to want to find these definitions but we have to keep pulling ourselves back and realize okay i'm in a human vehicle i'm not going to find a definition for everything like they've taught me you know but this is something magical something beautiful that i'm a part of and i, I want to embrace it as is and enjoy it as is it just takes some time to get there before we can understand that we can't really define it we don't get to define it that's part of the the that's the fun part of the journey so with Taoism what we have is the founders well traditionally thought to be Lao Tzu and some think that Lao Tzu is is more of a mythical person but others think that he really was uh, uh, an actual person that developed this uh, system of or viewpoint of way a way of looking at things so he was all about living in harmony with nature and and going with the flow don't go against the natural flow when you start to go against the natural flow of things we start to have issues so interesting that they have here implications for government and government is unnatural <laughs> it's true yeah i mean we are all these individual consciousnesses each one with a unique uh, viewpoint what we have to do is is come to an agreement to treat each other in a civil way but we we when you try to lock things into uh, certain viewpoints and all, you are really doing something that's unnatural in this in this universe. And each one of us, again, being totally unique, it is not going to ever really come to a, a perfect agreement in how things are to work out. And as they say, you know, usually government makes things worse. Well, that's because, again, it, it truly is an unnatural thing. Yet, when we see the universe and understand manifestation from a higher perspective, there really will be no need because we're going to have this understanding that everything needs to work together in order for there to be a symbiosis. Mm -hmm. It takes time and... and what I like to talk about is getting curious. You know, if you do see a belief system that, that you're not too sure about, put step back and get curious. Try not to be so judgmental. Understand that, okay, wow, this is a different culture. This is a different understanding. And I want to know more about that understanding. And I think that helps break us out of that box that they put us in, especially over here in the West, they want us to believe that this one thing is all there is. And if you look at anything else, well, that's really bad. And that's not going to bode well for your soul. And, and things, that's just not so. That's just simply not true. So 
coming at things with more of a curiosity instead of a judgmental point of view, I found to be very instrumental, you know, in, in my own journey and helping myself get out of a box and then out of the other box. Because once you get out of one box, you realize, oh, okay, I see <laughs> I'm in this other box here. So let's work on getting out of that. And this helps you open up and be flexible and be fluid like water. So, you know, what you see here is another representation in many ways of the Tao, of the yin and the yang. This is the Shiva Shakti. So there's many ways we could view this as the manifest and the unmanifest as, as the consciousness uh, that that is creating the manifest universe in order to explore it. And again, uh, that goddess energy is uh, the the paint canvas and that which we explore from the side, from the point of view that this is the creation. And so again, uh, the goddess energy is, is the mother energy. Why all the snakes everywhere? Well, again, wisdom and then that creative power. Because, you know, the, again, <laughs> when you look at a snake as... Cindy has said, when you look at them, they're, they're nothing but spinal cord the entire way, all the way from the tail, all the way up until their uh, cranium. Yeah, they're, they're all spinal cord. So again, this is the electrical current. And when we see the nadis represented as snakes, there's a reason for that. Because again, it, it's all referring to the creative power of the universe and the wisdom of using it in a constructive way i think that's key you know using it in a constructive way using it for your your own spiritual journey but we all have this ability to tap into this understanding and and again you know you look over into the west and you see the serpent and automatically they paint that as something very very bad they paint that as something horrible and evil when when the serpent is that creative power that lies within all of us and we all have the ability to expand on that and in in vedic astrology when they talk about the masculine and feminine they believe that every planet is masculine but everything that grows on that planet everything that comes up and manifests on that planet is the feminine and, and sometimes that helps people understand the divine masculine and divine feminine energies and how they need each other to bring about manifestation and when we look at this microcosm macrocosm <clears throat> you know a slice of a mouse's brain and then we have a snapshot of the universe and we see that they are a reflection of each other. The webs, uh, interconnectedness of the stars and the galaxies, and it's the same thing with the neurons. This again is that as above, so below. And this extends on as far as we know forever. And, and that's part of that big realization. When we talk about the mystical side of things, this is where the truths lie. Because, again, the fundamental uh, point of view, the fundamentalist point of view, is that's, that's where the deceptions lie. Because when we look at these, they should be kind of self-evident for anybody that has taken the time to do a little introspection. The principle of mentalism. All is mind. The all is mind. The universe is mental. So when we realize that thought is the most real thing that there is and well okay you know we're taught by modern science that it's, it's coming from chemical reactions in the brain y yeah no again think in terms of the cloud and and how things get uploaded magically even when they're not connected by a hard line and it's the same thing with us yes we do have a brain and the brain is functioning to run the body so to speak but but the mind is not in the brain and we are in in fact uh, part of a universal field of consciousness 
you know, one thing I always try to keep in mind is that thoughts are things. These are the very beginning steps of some type of manifestation that we all have the ability to do. Thoughts carry a frequency about them. So very important when you're on your spiritual journey is to keep those thoughts positive. But at the same time, we still have to process old traumas because that's what helps us break out of wherever it is we might get stuck, you know. And I mean, this is the part where I can get stuck when I start trying to read and understand and, and define. And it's just I don't work that way it's like i work more through feeling i work more through emotion and that understanding part of things so thoughts are things and we should view them as such also keep in mind that we are receptors of information so the information is not necessarily being formulated inside of us through chemical reactions as it is externally, you know, hearing from our guides, hearing from our ancestors, being able to tap into that understanding, what is you, what are the patterns that you're tapping into from your own experiences, and what is your angels and guides, and that's something, if you choose to get into that, that's something that, you know, it takes a while to learn, but um, very beautiful when you know you're hearing from your angels. Absolutely. And so, you know, these are the seven hermetic principles that are attributed to Hermes. Trismegistus. Or, um, and the second one is what we were talking about, the principle of correspondence. As above, so below. As below, so above. This is the as within, so without. So you might come to the realization that we are actually living inside of something we might call God. Literally. And even when we start looking at the layers of the energy body, as we sh uh, uh, of the physical body and then the energy body, as we shed these layers, we're still within something. And yet we are releasing from one density and just simply shifting our conscious frequency to another density. That, that's all we're doing. And we do the same thing when we uh, sleep and when we are going into uh, deep meditation. And, you know, again, it, it's all about the mind and not the brain, the mind. So the principle of vibration, nothing rests. Everything moves. Everything vibrates. Nothing stays the same. Nothing is uh, eternal in the sense that it's identical to what it was. Everything's always changing. Even within your body, every day cells are dying and new cells are coming into being. You're not the same person you were yesterday. You'll never be that person again. New experiences, uh, new things going on. We're always changing. Everything is always changing. So while the soul goes on, each individual incarnation is completely unique. Vibration, that's a fun one because that's where you can start to get into sound healing. And this is where I got hung up on sound healing because vibrationally, yes, we are changing at every moment and of every day, understanding that we are the densest form of anything out there, realizing that the sun is plasma and we are plasma. So when we are correcting those, um, issues with our energy body our energy field knowing that it will translate down to the 3d body and actually help heal us in some way shape or form is very exciting yeah absolutely so if everything is vibration then ultimately you know, when you're doing mantras you are absolutely uh rewriting your coding and and it's a time and an opportunity, for instance, to reset ourselves to a, a golden age frequency. And, and that's exactly what we do. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. And But also understanding that we did come here to have a bit of an experience. So it's definitely not going to be in a state of perfection, but it's going to be in a state of curiosity and trying to figure things out. Yes. And then we have the principle of polarity everything is dual now when we're talking about this this is this is inside of this manifest universe everything has poles positive and negative 
its pair of opposites, like and unlike, are the same. Opposites are identical in nature, but different in degree, extremes. Meet all truths are but half-truths. All paradoxes may be reconciled. And so again, the yin and the yang, this is how there's motion. This is how we put things into uh, into effect. And you know, this leads to uh, causality, uh, which is the, the last one there. But we also have the principle of gender. Gender's in everything. Everything has its masculine and feminine pr principles. Gender manifests on all planes. Then we have the principle of rhythm. Everything flows in and out. Everything has its tide. All things rise and fall. The pendulum swing manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates. Rhythm compensates. That's something that we can use to walk through our lives and realize whatever is going on, there is going to be some happy middle. There is going to be some type of peace. Um, and these are things that you can just sort of carry with you in your back pocket to bring you a little bit of peace if things are feeling overwhelming. The principle of cause and effect. Everything has its effect. Everything, every effect, every cause has an effect. And every effect has its cause. Everything happens according to law chances but a name for law not recognized natural laws and there are many planes of causation but nothing escapes from natural law so you know again you might look and say well well how can people get away with such atrocities and everything but they don't really because what they're doing is is building up this this negative karma which may manifest in other lifetimes and, you know, again, it, it's written, he must be born again and again and again and again. Now, we uh, can escape, so to speak, when we uh, maintain an organic sense of being uh, up to the higher realms and kind of withdraw from certain planes of existence like 3D and even 4D up into uh, the higher self if we so choose but when we're here in these manifested realms uh, there are the natural laws of cause and effect that we are obligated to abide in mm -hmm. you know when i look at cause and effect i to me it gives me an understanding that there is some type of a, a, a way of control around me i understand if i do certain things certain things are going to happen if I start a garden and I water it and I tend to it, it's going to give back to me. But having this understanding also helps you get through life. And, and, and it, it, it brings you that understanding, that solidity that maybe you need if things feel like they're spiraling out of control. You know, I kind of I kind of see the soul stepping back a little bit. And it's like, OK, there's all these things out of control all around you step back and what can you control what can you be a part of so that you have some understanding of your world and then when you get that mastered take another step of cause and effect and i guess this is another way to explore consciousness absolutely absolutely so these are the seven hermetic principles when, when we look at red blood cells and white blood cells and again red blood cells uh, very numerous they're obviously everything is is so critical to the continued manifestation of the body again it's it's about harmony it's about balance it's about homeostasis they are not in conflict with each other they in a natural way of doing things they're not jealous of each other uh, white blood cells don't try to take over red blood cells territory so to speak you know when you look at the human body you you see that you're literally mostly bacteria there's more bacteria than anything and the microbiome you know is what we call that bacteria that resides in in the body and when we use antibiotics 
you're equally equally destroying good and bad bacteria and you're literally taking lives that are all about maintaining balance and harmony inside the body. These individual units of consciousness, because every bacteria, every cell, is an individual unit of consciousness. Yet, collectively, of which there's trillions, they're you. They literally are you. And there's different species inside your body that are living in in harmony. Yes, sometimes there are definitely battles going on inside the body. But at the same time, uh, as we've said many times, you don't find lung cells invading the stomach and saying, we're conquering this. No, they work again in a symbiotic manner. This is the understanding. When we understand this picture, uh, then the conflict on the on on this planet and the world will will start to drop away, and we will rise up in frequency when we understand we are all part of a bigger whole. This is just the order of things. This is how things are. You know, it it's said again that the gut is is the larger mind, so to speak. And you know, many people are uh, aware of gut feelings, but, but don't understand why. Well, all these, again, all the bacteria and all the cells inside you are individual conscious beings. And when we start to understand that, everything changes. You can talk to your cells. You can talk to the entirety of what makes up your body. And again, you are a consortium. You're not a singular consciousness. You know, and with with that, um, I want to share a little something. A couple of years ago, I ran into a really bad situation, and I thought that my course of action would have to be antibiotics. And this this story is mostly for you channels out there because I, I think you guys could benefit from this if it ever happens down the road. I never recommend antibiotics, never, 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 unless you're facing like a life or death situation and really, then I still, you know, explore more options even then. But anyhow, I was in a really bad place and I, I had to go on antibiotics and I, being a channel, being able to read my cells my cells are dying and in my mind and in my heart and in my soul i thought that i was dying i had this overwhelming um, sadness and fear that i was dying but guess what i was channeling my cells that are dying they're like no you know we don't want to die but i picked up that channeling so so vividly and it was really quite traumatic and it it was horrible but if you're ever in that situation and you're feeling that way please understand that is not you you are channeling your own cells so i think that also speaks to our cells and how they speak to us too yeah absolutely absolutely you know and this is when when you take the time to quiet your mind you cannot underestimate the importance of this. And when you think about what some people have been taught in fundamentalist circles about meditation being evil, that should give you a clue that anybody that's teaching you that, they're really deceiving you. It's all about deception. They don't want you perceiving what's happening in your own body. But you can listen to these cells. You can listen to the bacteria. You can get a clue of what's going on inside yourself if you take the time to still your mind and to go within and and commune. You you know, there are techniques in Qigong of smiling down to deliver. There are certain sounds uh, that are pronounced that will... Um, help the liver, the stomach, the kidneys, the spleen, all the different organs, because again, each one is resonating at a certain frequency itself. Uh, Each one has its own collective group consciousness, and each individual cell has its own unique consciousness as well. So when we look at the number of atoms in a human cell, and the number of cells in a 
a human body and see uh, that they're roughly reflecting uh, the same proportion again. There, there's a resonance here. There is a resonance here. And, you know, it's been said in the Bible, ye are gods, you are universes. Every single person is a universe, a, a complete universe. Trillions of lives are in you. Trillions. So how wasteful is it to ever, you know, have a situation of war and you're destroying the opportunity for, for trillions of beings to, to have an existence. This is part of what is going on on the planet and how unnatural it is. This was a book I got as a teenager, I believe. I think it was written in the 50s. I, I know it was a very early one. I read um, with some Buddhist philosophy. It's called You Forever. T. Lope sang Rampa. And in it, he says uh, his, his guru, his teacher, uh, is saying to him, he comes out and he sees Lope saying, staring at the stars. And he says, Lope saying, why are you staring at the stars? And he just says, well, teacher, look at them all. You know, they're just amazing. Uh, they're marvelous. And his teacher says to him, you know, if I shrink you down by some magic to one millionth of the size that you are, and you look, were able to look up at your own body, that's exactly what you would see. That gives us that so within, so without. Because, you know, we are residing inside of another being. And we are a part of that being. And, and this is, you know, part of that big reality. Yeah, we are cells in the earth. The earth is a cell in something bigger. Our entire solar system is a cell in something bigger. It goes on to the galactic level, it goes on to the universe level, because again, the entire universe is just a cell. Right. And the attitudes and the thoughts that you put off, that creates a resonance in the body, hence making our thoughts so, so extremely, extremely important for your health. Absolutely. So again, you know, when we understand this, uh, then everything becomes very, very silly when we think about some of the, the way of looking at things that were taught in some of the traditions that are dominant on the planet. And it also divides us. And that is the obvious purpose. It's all about keeping us divided. Once we realize we got to change our ways and we need to work in a symbiotic way, everything changes everything changes this is where you you cannot you really truly uh cannot fix the system because the system is inherently flawed by its point of view it's definitely not natural it's completely unnatural completely unnatural so you know again guys thank you for your support on patreon and ko-fi and uh, I was intending on putting this up on Heart's Home, but I want to reach more people. So we're going to put this up on Evolutionary and invite people to come to Heart's Home, where this is all we talk about. And, you know, again, please do subscribe to all three uh, channels. And hopefully you guys will get some notifications. And if you do appreciate what we're trying to do, then come and join us over on the Patreon family. Uh, where you will get unique material that we don't put up anywhere else. God bless and namaste. Namaste.